Hello everybody and welcome to MindTribeMemory.com. Today we're going to be talking about remembering names. Okay, I know you've been in this situation before. You meet somebody at a party or at a social gathering. You meet somebody and you get their name maybe. Um, uh, but it's in passing and you go on to the next person that you want to talk to and you kind of put it out of your mind. You don't really remember the person's name but they remember your name. And over the next few months they constantly are coming up to you and and calling you by your first name, and you're like, oh my gosh, why, why didn't I get their name? Well, today I'm here to teach you about how you can avoid all of that. We're gonna teach you how to remember names. We're gonna get started with it right away. By the way, guys, if you like this content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel below. Um, give it a thumbs up, and here we go. Okay, so the first step whenever you're remembering anybody's name is, is a very simple one, okay? And it's before you do any kind of uh, uh, memorizing, before you even think about the person's name, before you even um, do any of kind of the mnemonics that we're going to get into is the first step, and that's to care, okay? You have to care about remembering the person's name, okay? This is a big one. Um, Dale Carnegie in his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, says that uh, to remember that to a person, their name is the sweetest and most important sound in any language. Um, guys, a person's name to them is a very special thing. Um, and I'm sure you've been in the situation where um, maybe you didn't really know somebody very well, but they came up to you and they remembered you by your first name. Um, it made you feel so good inside that they would take the time to uh, remember your name. Um, they, maybe they had to, you know, spend a few minutes in memorizing it, uh, but however they did it, they remembered your name. And then conversely, uh, a time when maybe somebody that you've interacted with many times before has come up to you and they said, oh, well, you know, I, I'm so sorry about this, but um, I, I, I really should know your name, but I just don't. Um, and, and I'm sorry about that. Can, can I get your name again? Well, that made you feel really bad inside. It probably made you um, a little bit slighted that they wouldn't uh, value you enough to take the time to do that. So it's very important to remember people's names. It makes you a more likable person, um, opens up new doors for new friendships that you wouldn't have before. Um, and just overall, it's a very good habit to, to foster. So that's number one is to care, okay? Okay, here we go. Step number two is a feature, okay? I wrote down feature. So what this is is, Imagine that you're at a social gathering. It could be church, could be you know party, it could be anything. Okay, I want you to pick out somebody across the room that you want to meet. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go up, we're gonna greet this person. But before we do, what we're gonna do is we're going to identify a facial feature or bodily feature about this person that really just sticks out to us. Okay, it could be the fact that um, maybe they're bald, maybe. Um, They've got a large nose, maybe their eyes are really close together. Um, whatever it is, I want you to, across the room from a distance, I want you to pick out a facial feature or bodily feature that just kind of distinguishes this person, okay? So that's step number two, okay? Okay, step number three is focus, okay? So what we're gonna do, now that we have our facial feature, um, let's say, okay, let's say it's a girl. Let's say this girl's name is Jennifer, okay? Um, we've already across the room, we, we've picked out the fact that maybe her eyes are really close together, okay? So that's, that's our feature that we're going to focus on. Her eyes are really close together. So that's something that when we look at her, we're just going to go, okay, her eyes are really close. Or, you know, generally speaking, she has closer eyes than most people. It doesn't have to be like really close, okay? Um, so our, our third step here is we're going to go up to her. This is another kind of like a no-brainer one. So we're going to go up to her and we're gonna shake her hand, and we're gonna focus on her name, okay? We don't know her name is Jennifer yet, but we're gonna say, um, you know, hello, my name is Aaron, and you are, and we're not gonna be thinking about the party. We're not gonna be thinking about what's for dinner tonight. We're not gonna be thinking about the next person that we're gonna meet. Um, we're not even gonna be thinking about how awkward it is. Maybe if you're an introvert, we're not gonna be thinking about that. We're gonna be thinking about getting her name, okay? That is the most important thing. When she says Jennifer, I want you to really focus on that, okay? So it's Jennifer. Okay, so that's step number three, is just to focus. Okay, so step number three, focus. Step number four is sound, okay? This is where it gets a little, um, uh, this is where it gets interesting, okay? So we're gonna take uh, Jennifer, okay? That, that's our example, it was Jennifer, okay? We're gonna think about the sound of that word, okay? Jennifer. Je the, what, what I think of when I think of Jennifer is I think of gem and fur. What you want to do is you want to take the sound of the person's name 
in your native language, uh, which for me is English, and you're going to think about words that uh, rhyme with uh, whatever that name is. Okay, so if it's, um, for example, let's say uh, we go to somebody and his name is Chris, right? I'm going to be thinking of a cross. Um, let's say I go up to uh, Matt, you know, as a uh, green Matt, right? Um, I would think of a doormat, okay? Um, if this uh, name's was something uh, a little more complicated, maybe a multi-syllable like Ant Antoinette or something like that, um, I would think of a toy in a net, okay? So that's what I would think about. So the idea is to take the sound of their name and convert it into images, okay? And once you have those images, then you're ready for step number five. And for this step, you're going to take the images that you just created and now what you're going to do is you're actually going to envision it, okay? So um, let's go back to Jennifer, right? Um, we have to think about, um, we, we know that we're gonna use the word gem and fur, okay? Um, so now we have to actually create a, a picture with that. So um, uh, general rules of thumb, the crazier it is, the better. Uh, the more outlandish it is, the better. Uh, you know, just uh, the more disgusting it is, the better. Um, just anything that's memorable, anything you can do to make it more memorable, to make it come more alive to you, um, is gonna be the best bet. So for Jennifer, I'm gonna be thinking about gems and fur. Maybe you can imagine uh, that there's, uh, maybe there's uh, like old school medieval f uh, fur bag, and inside the fur bag is a bunch of gems, okay? So we're putting gems in the fur. Uh, and so now, so now we have our image. Okay, that was super easy. Um, it could be other things too. It could be uh, maybe like a really furry caterpillar um, has gems studded along the sides of it. Um, maybe uh, yeah, you, I mean you could you can go on with uh, some examples. Um, those are the two that come to mind. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and use that bag example. So we've got our bag. Um, our furry bag and it's filled with gems. Okay, so that's gonna be our image that we're gonna use um, So that was step number five now. We have to go to step number six here Okay, step number six is to apply okay, so now this is where this is where all the magic happens This is where it comes together. Okay, so we've got we've got our medieval bag, right? Uh, it's furry. It's got gems inside of it. We've got Jennifer Okay, we've met her. We see that she has eyes that are really close together. Okay, what we're gonna do, what I want you to do is I want you to have the picture that you created interact with the person's facial feature. Uh, yes, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna imagine for Jennifer, in her case, I want you to imagine that that furry bag is being tipped upside down and all the gems are running out of it and they're falling off her nose and splitting into her eyes, okay? Um, or you could you could imagine the opposite, maybe the gems are falling off the bag onto her face and the outside of her eyes pushing them close together, okay? This is where it gets really, um, uh, you can use your imagination, um, this is where you really focus on, in on it, okay? Um, so whatever you can do to have that picture interact with the facial feature, that's what's going to trigger so that when you see them next time, you're going to walk up to them, you're going to be like, okay, uh, uh, I, I know I've met this person uh, before, I know I know their name, oh, that's right, um, I see, I, okay, that's right, her eyes, um, her eyes are really close together, that's right, and then there was that bag, and there was the gems coming out of it, so it, it was furry. So is Jennifer, yeah, that's right. Jennifer, how are you tonight? Um, so it's super easy, guys, and once you get the hang of it, it gets a lot easier. Um, so that's step number six, is to apply, okay? And then we have our last step here, step number seven, which is to review. Um, it, it, this is often overlooked, but it's very important uh, to review. Um, when you're actually talking to the person in the conversation, uh, you can do all this. You can apply the image to their facial feature um, w during the conversation. You want to be a little careful so that they don't think that you're not paying attention to them because your your mind is focused on uh, you know filing your mnemonics. Um, so you got to be a little careful with that. But generally, um, you can do it during the conversation. What I tend to do is after the conversation has taken place, after I've gotten to meet the other person and I know them. Later on during the day or the next day, every time I think back to that conversation, 
I take a minute and I close my eyes and I think about the, the image that I had and I rehearsed to the, myself uh, the name. So I would say Jennifer, gems and fur, it was on her face. And you don't have to take a long time with it. It could be, you know, 10 seconds. Um, that's all it takes, guys, It's 10 seconds, maybe uh, two or three times, um, and then you're gonna remember her name for the rest of your life. Um, and that's gonna be so important to you um, as far as uh, your, your business opportunities and, and everything, it's, it's very beneficial. So that's step number seven, is to review and to continually practice this, um, and you definitely get better at it as you go along. Just on that point, guys, I want to reiterate, this is definitely something that you get better at over time. Um, there's examples of people that can do this to a room of hundreds of people, uh, remember everybody's name, and at the end of the conference, they can send them off by name, every single one of them. So this is definitely something you can do. Um, what I'd like you to do is, um, right now, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, but most importantly, what I'd like you to do is comment in the sections below about names that you would like me to help you with. I'm gonna give you some examples to get you started this week. Um, or head on over to mindtribememory.com um, and check out the information we have there. And uh, I'll see you next time.